my name is Tamir Hassan. I'm going to be presenting what's, I guess, for me, it's more a, a sort of a vision that I've been having for a, for a number of years. Um, obviously inspired by the whole concept of embedding semantic machine readable data in a, in, into a PDF. I'm very much interested in, I believe it should be taken one step further, um, which is why I, I'm thinking of, I've actually worked on a prototype for making PDF editable in, in some kind of way, and I'll define much later in this talk what this, what I actually mean by editability. Um, and my angle is that I've, I come from research, I've spent a lot of time getting data out of PDFs, particularly out of tables, as you have done as well, Sean, and probably many other people here in the room. Um, and this is actually something that I'd, uh, I'd developed a prototype and worked on before the pandemic. And since the pandemic, I've been working more on fonts and font engineering. Um, and this was more sort of actually a private project that I've been working on in my free time up to now. And uh, I'm here because I guess in order to make something meaningful out of this, it requires collaboration because this is just too much work for one person. So, um, PDF is, I guess, is it ubiquitous? Is it, isn't it yet ubiquitous? It certainly is ubiquitous for final form documents for, as, a, as, a com, as a format for consumption, um, at least for documents that are paper-based, canvas-based. Um, so PDF is everywhere, but I guess we are all here because we think PDF should be even more everywhere even more in use than it is now. And we have final form documents. We all obviously have editable documents in um, the native formats of a wide variety of different applications. And there's nothing wrong to, be, to have the right tool for the right job. But yeah, I guess my, my belief is that PDF could also be the lowest common denominator that also unifies these uh, variable editable formats. Just to go through the structure of my talk, um, I'm going to say a few words about how we exchange documents and the pains and the opportunities that maybe you here also have had. Um, I'll then talk about current well, maybe solutions isn't the right word, current approaches, the things that we can do with PDF at the moment um, in a clearly defined way. And then I'll propose what I believe um, the next step should be in order to make PDFs universal, universally editable um, in some kind of way. And I realize I haven't used the word text in, in, this, in the title of this talk, but I'll be concentrating mostly on how to edit the textual components of the PDF, because the rest can be essentially considered as a graphic, and that's, that's the subject of, a, of another issue. That's the subject of, another, of a later talk, maybe, once we get the text sorted in some kind of way. I'll then list the technical challenges that we have, uh, many of which are already solved or partly solved, and then I'll go through at the end a few screenshots of a, of a prototype I've developed as a, as a proof of concept. So the pains and op opportunities that we have with document exchange. Now, um, in fact, uh, Thomas and I and maybe a few other people, I think even before the pandemic, had a short discussion on LinkedIn where we were talking about how, how does this idea of ed having a PDF that's editable differ to just having embedded files and using the existing native formats and do we need it? And it is good enough for, for most use cases. I just feel it could be a lot better. Um, and Obviously, formats evolve, formats change, platforms are different, uh, PowerPoint on the Mac, PowerPoint on the PC, PowerPoint, um, LibreOffice, in fact, I tried opening the slides here that, um, that were set, the slide template and, and LibreOffice couldn't do anything with it. Um, it was a complete mess, even though PPT is supposedly an ISO fully documented format. Um, fonts are another problem all, all to themselves. Um, I do talk about differences in user um, in the user interface. Um, this is, on the one hand, you need the right tool for the right job, but actually, I guess, across different applications, there should be more consistent consistency in the way that user interfaces are, are designed to solve the same problems. Um, and finally, there's a big potential for typographic 
small um, idiosyncrasies in the way systems are designed to render text, which might cause reflow errors, even if the same font is present, or maybe kerning is not supported, open type features aren't supported. Um, so these are all issues that we have when jumping between systems. And I see that as a huge opportunity for PDF. Um, everyone knows PDF as digital paper. Can we make it, turn it into smart paper? Um, okay, most, many users still believe it's owned by Adobe, but um, yeah, those are the other um, opportunities and advantages that I see of maybe taking PDF in this direction. And that is ultimately the unique selling proposition. I don't need to explain to you why PDF is so, so popular today, but an editable format that offers all these advantages, guarantees that you see here, just doesn't exist at the moment. So what are the current, what can you do with PDF at the moment? As we, um, as I mentioned already, it's possible to embed the source files. In fact, OpenOffice, as you mentioned in, in your talk, Sean, um, has been doing that for a long time as hybrid PDF. I think back then it wasn't, wasn't a documented or supported way necessarily. I think they just put it in the con content stream somewhere. And if you, if you were to exchange such a document with other people, they wouldn't even know that it includes the source file because it's just named PDF. You can open it in OpenOffice, but probably nobody ever thought of doing that. I certainly wouldn't have thought of doing that. And once you open the document for editing, assuming you know it can be open for editing in, in, its, in the native application, then you lose the advantages, you lose robust layout. Hopefully it has embedded fonts. If not, then reflow is guaranteed. Um, so essentially it's not portable when you're editing. And I guess there's another um, potential issue with security. Someone could sneak in some very small changes um, there's, there's no guarantee that the document that's embedded is actually the same, same document that you have a view of um, in the normal PDF page view. Um, I'll talk first, I'll just briefly mention PDF forms, which is also one way of interacting and adding information to documents. And also what Matthew mentioned in his talk after I raise the question, annotations is also something that's supported in PDF, but essentially the, the way that they are presented is also a bit of a mess. Um, I remember trying to annotate research papers on my Mac and then going to a PC with Acrobat, with, with Acrobat or events even on, on Linux, and each of these annotations just look different because there's n the format doesn't say how, how they need to be graphically um, presented. So that, it's just something that cannot really work in a collaborative setting, even if one person is jumping across different platforms. Um, but I guess when we talk about editing a PDF, most people think of um, products such as Acrobat, Foxit, Nitro, and um, Kofax as well. I saw advertising a, their, their PDF editor outside. Um, and such solutions are ultimately based on guessing making guesses, educated guesses, artificial intelligence to, re to rediscover the PDF structure, but not, not only the structure behind it, but also the formatting rules that were then used in place, because when you edit, you have to reflow if necessary. And this is why it's essentially suitable only for minor touch-up operations. Um, just lately, I tried to edit an invoice in Acrobat, and unfortunately, the form detection, where I had lots of dots to fill in my name, failed at that point. In fact, the layout just went all over the place. Maybe it's fixed by now, who knows? Um, but what certainly isn't likely to work very well is if you repeatedly edit and resave the document because you have cumulative errors. At some point, it's just not gonna work at all. And this is what um, we ultimately want to, um, the goal of this project is to make such editing um, really possible. And this is where I come to the proposal of universal edit editability. Um, now, I think the way Matthew talked about a PDF in, it, in his talk was with the terms view, a model and a view. And I think here I'm talking about model as a layout model, but actually we have the content, which is modeled in a way, 
And um, then we have the view which tells us the rules that are necessary to um, go for the content from the content to the presentation. Um, and there's, in fact, something missing from this if we actually want to have a document that can be robustly edited. We need to also have the result of these um, of this layout, not, not just the model, not just the content model in the view, but also, also the result of this transformation. So we can always ensure that this result is maintained. And then finally, robust text type setting um, methods that also, in, if we need to make small changes, they can place text in a predefined area. Now, I'll come to that a little bit later. Um, firstly, I wanted to mention web standards, because web standards are like this in a big, are essentially based on having a model and a view, or content and then a transformation. Um, but they are very much a, a moving target. Um, and I guess one thing that's, that we can learn from the way PDF is now um, incorporating web in, such, in, a, in a way by deriving um, with responsive PDF, making it possible to derive the HTML from the PDF, that at least is a way of ensuring that the content that we get that is derived at least somehow re reflects the content that's there in the original PDF. Um, so that's maybe something that we can use as a starting point. So I'll just give you a very simple idea, um, simple um, example of what a, what a model and its XML in this case representation could look like. Now we have here the, the document in its structured um, form and then below we have um, the um, page layout which is specified and then which text goes into where. And this is actually um, the document that I use as an example in the prototype that I developed already back in 2018. Now, how, how might a canvas-based um, format model layouts? Um, and I'm, I've got here three proposals. We can have a, I guess when we're familiar with the way most applications work, we have word processors, which have really a sort of top to bottom, very simple layout. Um, we can also say there are multiple columns. There are ver various, um, automatic layout uh, principles in CSS, for example, grid, uh, which could also become part of such a specification for complex layouts. Um, it would be a case of sitting down and defining and deciding what should be part of a standard and what else would be treated as free form. Um, now, for the simple layouts, if we change the content, then the way text reflows is fairly trivial. I mean, there will be some page breaking issues, but it's, you know, it's pretty clear also to the user who might be using such an application, what's gonna happen if I add text. Um, for a more complex layout, um, there are some, lim within some limitations, automatic reflow is also possible, particularly if the um, layout model is something that's clearly defined, such as a two column layout or an XY uh, decomposable layout. Again, if we have figures which necessitate floats, which might need to be repositioned, this is something that would then be up to the um, application that edits the PDF to decide. And this could be happen this could take place manually, this could take place semi-automatically. And finally, we have the, more com the most complex layouts, which are free form, where essentially text, much like a desktop publisher, like InDesign, is just placed on the page. And um, it's possible to link frames and have text flowing be between frames. But um, if content changes, nothing is done automatically. The user basically has to drag the frames or create a new frame based on how much content there is. So that's, that, those are concepts that I think most applications people who use such applications already are familiar with. Okay, that was a slide that, yeah. 
So what are we missing? Um, what do we still need in such an editable format? Um, now, as I mentioned before, I'm not sure if I made it very clear, but we need to store not only the, um, the content, as a, the content with its markup and the transformation, i.e. the layout rules, but also the final result. So we know how much space text, te text has to take up. And um, we need a typesetting algorithm that really prioritizes layout over typography, which um, means that ultimately, even if a, in the worst case, a font is missing, text would have to be squeezed in order to, might have to make some typographical changes um, in order to fit the text into a particular space. Um, but um, also work that I did back in 2015, I was able to show that usually um, by adapting where the line breaks are made, it's possible to have about 10% of room for maneuver anyway. So if the amount of, the amount of content increases or decreases slightly, uh, reflow is not necessary. I also want to talk very briefly about fonts because they're quite a minefield, um, technically and legally, and in fact with, with open type, with the developments over the last 10, maybe 20 years, they've gotten even more complex. Um, now in PDF, it's common, common as a consumption format to subset a font, to use only the, the characters that actually are, are necessary. Um, this avoids having to embed the whole font in such a way that you're essentially distributing a copyrighted font file. Um, and this is something publishers generally allow in their license. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do much with it in the first place. Now, if you need to edit the document, this, this is obviously difficult as soon as you need to use a character that's not, not present. And it's possible to maybe conservatively edit, edit a document in such a way that only the paragraph um, is affected that actually needs to be reflowed and everything else remains in place. That's one poss possibility. Um, it, it would also be possible to embed the metrics without the outlines. Again, this is something that's maybe legally a bit of a gray area. Um, to make it possible to edit a document on a different computer, a different company that might not have the corporate font, and then actually it would still take up the correct amount of space, and then the document be, can be sent back to the original um, author, and then it would display properly. Um, again, this was also easier back in the type one days, which would actually have separate metrics files. Um, now with open type, I think it's a largely solvable problem for Latin, but um, non-Latin um, glyph composition is also gets more complex, and this is essentially a work of code. So, so the um, font authors would have to explicitly license that. Now, to show um, how this might work, I programmed a a formatting tool as a sort of a pre proof of concept. It is on GitHub, um, and yeah, I probably, in hindsight, would have been much easier just to base it on tech rather than uh, rewriting the Knuth Press algorithm and making a few changes to it. So, just to give you an idea what it looks like, this is this is the document. It is, it is actually a, a research paper that I generated using this formatter, and there are two embedded files which include the, the content, the marked up content, and then the physical description, which describes the, not only the, the layout, but also the result of applying the layout algorithm with all the coordinates of the blocks. And here you can see what some of the code looks like. And there are, in fact, two modes. You can either run, it's, it is a command line tool written in Java. You can make it create a new layout, or you can make it also edit the existing layout. In which, um, and by doing so, it will only make the changes when they are necessary. And it will also highlight potential issues. So what, I, what I've done in the next example, I've changed the amount of content so that the figure where it's, um, which was, um, referenced on the um, left slide by adding, adding an additional section, the reference to the figure is then moved to the next page. So what the tool actually does is it marks the figure with red 
in, in red showing that um, this is this is a um, it's a potential problem and ultimately it's up to the user then to move the figure or run an algorithm that maybe completely redoes the figure placement in the algorithm. Again, this is something that probably only needs to be done when the text is, um, when the content is almost ready and not while editing the document. You don't want to have things jumping about. So to conclude, um, I believe um, that this is a great opportunity for PDF um, and it's certainly very nice to see other people working on, on similar, similar goals here. And um, yeah, I'll be, um, I believe the technical challenges are solvable, but ultimately in order to do this, to make this a reality, we need a, so a showcase product and um, collaboration with other individuals, other organizations that share similar, maybe not exactly the same goals, um, but let's see if we, we, we can find some alignment here. And uh, here are the three references. Um, the website that is up here basically um, detailing some of the ideas of the concept and the two research papers, which should be, I think, freely available. If not, uh, drop me a line. I'll be very happy to send them to you.